Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about coding skills for digital marketing teams. Now this video is intended mostly for marketing managers, marketing directors, CMOs, etc. Really anyone who is in charge of either hiring people for a digital marketing team or is in some way responsible for professional development opportunities. That being said, if you yourself are kind of on the front lines as a digital marketer, or you're an aspiring digital marketer, this video might also be very useful for you because it'll give you a sense of the kind of skills that can help you take your career to the next level. So let's dig in. So the table I'm about to show on the screen will kind of diagram out the coding skills or languages that map really nicely to different roles on a digital marketing team. Now you'll see the skills that I consider to be basically necessary, having a big check mark, and ones that are recommended or nice to have with a smaller check mark. You can probably get by without them, but they'll come in handy at some point down the road. Now I'll admit to being a little bit biased or enthusiastic with this myself because in my own personal experience, you know, learning some of these skills uh, along my career trajectory as an SEO strategist really helped to take things to the next level. But I did run this graph by several people, whether they were on our team or on other people's digital marketing teams, and it kind of rang true for everyone. So I want to start off with kind of defining each of these, uh, because a lot of people who are, you know, marketing managers or CMOs, you might have heard of CSS, you know, it's important for something but you don't really know what it is or what situations it's really relevant for. So I'm gonna give you a brief primer on that. For those that are a little bit more savvy and maybe already know some of these programming languages, feel free to just skip forward to the next chapter. That's what the buttons down here are for, so use them. All right, so the first of these is the hypertext markup language, also known as HTML. HTML is essentially the fundamental building blocks of how content on the internet is structured. Uh, it informs web browsers, whether that's something like Chrome and Firefox or even screen reading software, on sort of what the fundamental structure of a piece of content is. The next of these is CSS or cascading style sheets. This essentially is responsible for kind of the, the style, if you will, of a uh, HTML web page. It basically communicates, uh, you know, the, the colors and the sizes and the shapes of all different bits of content on the page. Um, it's also useful just from an efficiency perspective because multiple HTML pages can share a single CSS file so that they're all kind of styled the same without having to include that information in every individual HTML page. All right, so next up is JavaScript. JavaScript is an incredibly popular programming language that makes so much of the internet as we know it today possible. You know, without JavaScript, things like uh, Google Analytics tracking, you know, wouldn't be possible, at least not in the same way that it happens now. Uh, you know, all the little web apps that you use, the vast majority of them are powered by JavaScript or a related language called TypeScript, which is sort of a superset of JavaScript. Um, so it's, it's something that's incredibly popular and it also is incredibly versatile. You know, there are kind of uh, command line or server side applications of this as well for more advanced programmers. They might use something called node.js to write command line applications. Um, so there's really no limit to what a person can do with JavaScript. All right, so next we're talking about Python, Julia, and R. Uh, these programming languages can also be used like JavaScript for kind of making applets, um, but what makes them a little bit different is that a lot of their users are using them for statistical analysis, machine learning, and things like that. Uh, Python is also very frequently used for automating tasks because it just kind of, uh, it kind of comes naturally with some of the modules that are associated with Python. Um, so there's a lot of overlap between these and JavaScript, um, but I would kind of separate these out, uh, you know, if you have the need to do, you know, analysis on large, large sets of data, uh, one of these three languages will probably be a little bit more useful than JavaScript will be. All right, so next up is regular expressions, uh, or regex for short. This is a little bit different than uh, the other languages because they don't really have uh, this normal sort of, you know, somewhat readable format to them. Instead, it's used to construct basically search filters. Uh, you know, they're, they're technically called uh, search patterns, um, but the applications for this would be something like, let's say you only want to match, uh, you know, URLs that contain some pattern in them, whether that's a simple word or one word from a set of words, or maybe you just want to find every instance on your website where a word should be capitalized but isn't. That's the kind of thing that you would use regular expressions for. So think of it as a way to construct 
more intelligent searches and filters. All right, and the last up is talking about bash or shell. These are essentially used for communicating via the command line, uh, you know, most commonly in this context with a web server. Uh, you know, it can be useful to do things like retrieve log files or to automate some tasks. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll be used a little bit less frequently, I think, than some of these other languages in a digital marketing context, but having a person on your team that's able to access a web server and, you know, work with it, uh, is invaluable. So that's why we've included it on this list. Now, of course, all of that was kind of a simplification, but a useful simplification, and hopefully it should give you an idea of some of the most common applications of these different programming languages. All right, now let's talk through the different roles on a digital marketing team and why these coding languages make sense for each role. We'll start off by talking about analytics. So you're probably thinking to yourself, why does my analytics person need to know anything other than Google Analytics and Excel or something like that? Um, and the simplest answer is that sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes tracking isn't firing when it should, etc. And unless your analytics person has at least some basic knowledge of HTML, JavaScript, etc., they might not know how to fix it, and that means you're going to have to outsource that issue to somebody else to fix, which can slow you down and cost you money, which nobody wants. Now, what do they need to know besides that? Well, personally, I think that knowing something like Python, Julia, or R can be useful for when they're trying to tackle a problem or answer a question that just can't be solved with the built-in tools available in software like Google Analytics. You know, there are limitations to everything. Um, and a lot of these limitations can be overcome if you're able to kind of write things from scratch. And so I really think that that's a way that an analytics professional could kind of take things to the next level and go beyond, uh, you know, the more foundational baseline skills. Similarly, regular expressions and, uh, you know, bash or shell can also be very useful in kind of these fringe cases where, um, you know, there's a problem to be solved uh, that can't be kind of solved out of the box. You know, regular expressions can be particularly useful, in my opinion, for someone working in analytics, because even just in Google Analytics, you can use regular expressions to filter through data. Um, and so it just comes in handy quite a lot. Uh, for Bash and Shell, you know, there are some situations where your analytics person might want to access server logs. Uh, for instance, if they want to see how server log data sort of correlates with other data sources like Google Analytics, um, that can be very, very useful sometimes. And unless they have some understanding of Bash or Shell, they might be limited in their ability to retrieve that data. All right, so next up we're talking about advertising. Now I'm making the assumption here that uh, if you have someone who's doing advertising on your team, someone else is likely doing the analytics work and the SEO work, et cetera. Um, and if that's the case, I don't think that advertising is a particularly code heavy practice. Uh, you know, in an instance where your advertising person is building landing pages, in that case, knowing HTML and CSS uh, will come in handy. You know, even if they're using a platform that helps construct those landing pages for them, you know, with templates and stuff like that, eventually you're going to run into a bug or a limitation that you want to overcome. And so in those instances, having at least some basic understanding of HTML and CSS, even just enough to be able to ask the right questions, uh, you know, whether they're searching for it in Google or something like that can be super, super handy. I will say that there have been instances where people on our advertising team will take advantage of the coding skills that other team members have. For instance, uh, you know, a recent example, someone on our advertising team needed to combine data sets from dozens of different spreadsheets into one and didn't really have an automated way to do it so they didn't spend all day, you know, copying and pasting. And so for instances like that, having someone else on the team that maybe knows Python, JavaScript, et cetera, um, is super, super handy. You know, if you are in advertising team of one and, you know, maybe you're the only person on the marketing team in general, it might behoove you to kind of pick up some other programming skills in addition to HTML and CSS uh, if you're going to be completely self-sufficient. All right, so next we're talking about SEO, which is my personal favorite. I've been doing SEO at least part-time and usually full-time for about 14 years now. Um, and so I've seen firsthand how broad of a field it can be. You know, for some people, SEO means writing content. For other people, it means really, really nitty gritty technical stuff. Um, so it's an incredibly broad field and, you know, 
I personally feel like the SEO should be the Swiss army knife of the team um, that knows a little bit about a lot of different things and can go in and fix problems. So in my opinion, having some experience with basically all of these skills will come in handy. That being said, when I say that, I'm not talking about entry level SEO. I'm not talking about the person that you hired your team straight out of college, you know, to start working on keyword research, and writing title tags and stuff like that. I'm talking, these are the skills that an SEO develops throughout their career. Um, and so for instance, if you are at a marketing agency and you want someone to like lead an SEO department, or if you're at a fortune 500 corporation where you have a large SEO team, you know, you want to have these skills uh, you know, kind of represented across these teams because it is a very, very broad skill set. So why do I think that an SEO needs all of these skills? Well, for things like HTML, it's pretty obvious, you know, even a title tag, uh, which is, you know, the most important thing to optimize on a page, that is an HTML tag. There's no getting around at least having some basic understanding of HTML. <laughs> CSS, you know, you might think is only used for aesthetics because it's, you know, cascading style sheets. It's all about style. Um, but the reality is that's becoming more and more important for SEO over time. This is particularly true with the Core Web Vitals update that's just around the corner. Uh, you know, Core Web Vitals is a set of user experience metrics that Google is measuring and now factoring into the ranking algorithm. And unless you have some understanding of CSS, you will be very limited in your ability to improve the core web vitals for a given page. So I think that that is particularly useful. I also think it's very important to have some understanding of at least one programming language. Now this could be JavaScript, or it could be something like Python. You probably don't need to use both. Uh, it can be useful to know both, but I wouldn't by any means consider it necessary because there is a lot of overlap uh, in terms of what they can do. Uh, so JavaScript is very useful for things like, you know, if you want to build your own web applets like we do, you know, we basically build a lot of our own SEO tools and we host them on our website. JavaScript is great for that. Uh, on the other hand, Python's really good for things like web scraping. You know, if you want to, uh, you know, crawl every URL on a site and filter down to just some HTML tag in order to do some sort of analysis, Python is amazing for that, and you can do things with it that you can't do with kind of pre-built SEO software. So I really, really love using Python for SEO. Finally, knowing, uh, you know, Bash and Shell, once again, very, very useful here for accessing servers. Let's say you want to figure out, uh, you know, the crawl depth of Google, you know, you want to get at those server logs and figure out, you know, what are the set of URLs that Google's crawler has crawled, where does it give up and why? You know, having the ability to interact with a server via the command line will be very, very useful in those instances. Okay, so for email marketing, HTML and CSS seems like a no-brainer. Obviously, you know, the visual aesthetics of emails matter quite a lot to things like your click-through rate. So the ability to make a fantastic looking email can make all the difference. Now, of course, there are tons of platforms that can help you do this without using any code whatsoever. But once again, these tools have limitations and they sometimes break. The last thing you want is to have an upcoming deadline that you're unable to meet because a tool isn't working either as intended uh, or it has some limitation that doesn't let you deliver, uh, you know, to expectations in one way or another. So I think that taking the time to learn HTML and CSS uh, will invariably come in handy down the road. Last but not least, talking about content writers, I really think the only necessary skill here is the very, very basics of HTML, things like title tags, header tags, uh, you know, link tags, the AHREF tags, basically. Uh, you know, having these skills will make it very, uh, you know, easy for them to take the content that maybe they wrote in Microsoft Word or another text editor, get it into a content management system like WordPress, um, and fix any sort of weird glitches that come either with the copy and pasting or how they want to format it. Uh, you know, it basically just allows the content writer to be self-sufficient uh, to a greater extent. And so I think that it's very, very useful for them to spend maybe just a day or an afternoon learning just the very, very basics of HTML. I really think that's all that's required. So that's the overview. Once again, you know, I, I want to come at this with the perspective of you're gonna have to tailor the skill sets of your team members to the size of your team. You know, if your analytics person and your advertising person 
are the same person, then you know it means that your advertising person probably also needs to know regular expressions um, and maybe even learn Python, Julia, or R. You know, the the more your team is kind of consolidated into a few people, the more kind of skill intensive those people will need to be. That being said, it's also worth keeping in mind that almost none of these coding languages should be considered a prerequisite for an entry level position or even a position that someone might have after a few years of industry experience. I don't think it's realistic to say, okay, we're looking for someone with two years of SEO experience and they know JavaScript and Python and regular expressions. Uh, those people do exist, but they are very, very difficult to find. And I wouldn't consider that to be anything less than a senior level position. So you kind of have to tailor uh, your requirements and expectations uh, in a way that makes sense uh, for what for who you're trying to recruit, um, you know, the level of compensation that you can offer, the size of your team, etc. So there's a lot of deep thinking that needs to go into this. Okay, so let's say that you've watched this and, you know, whether you are the marketing manager who is in charge of professional development opportunities, or you're just an individual on a digital marketing team kind of looking to step up your game, what should be the next step? Well, to make things very, very tangible, you gotta find a good training resource. Our personal favorite right now is Code Academy. Uh, you know, we've tried a few different platforms, etc., cetera, uh, and Code Academy seems to be uh, the best currently. It's very, very interactive. It's very low cost. It represents the vast majority of the programming languages that we talked about uh, in this video. So I would recommend checking it out. I think there's a free trial. Obviously, this is not sponsored by Code Academy or anything. This is legitimately just our own recommendation uh, because we use it personally and really, really like it. So that is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, there's going to be more videos coming soon. So if you liked this video, subscribe, and you'll see those appear in your YouTube feed uh, soon. So thanks.